So hello, coffee culture family. Hello, Sean. And hi, and um, I'm going to tell you a little about him. He is an award-winning writer and director of commercials and films, a New York native living in Los Angeles. His work is defined by its subtle comedy and huge heart, which I will agree with. Sean was nominated for a Young Director Award at Cannes Lions. I'm sure I killed the pronunciation of that. His short (laughs) film, (laughs) This Is When We Met, was featured on Tastemaker's Short of the Week and the Oscar qualifying festival, Holly Shorts. I just love that because it's named after me. Ah. (laughs) John's feature film, Hudson, a dramedy starring Richard Mazur, is streaming on Amazon Prime and Apple TV. I've seen that. We'll talk about it. He is currently working on a dramedy series, Greg in LA, which recently caught some attention after going viral on social media. And yes, I got sucked into that and loved it and have binged it and shared it and interviewed Gregory Lay. So we'll talk about that. Um, And I want to point out a little unknown fact that was not on his bio is that Sean is a singer songwriter too. So we're going to dive into that little piece. Uh, How did you know that? <laughs> because I do my do. Remember I told you I was stalking you on Instagram. Oh, I do, that's right. I, I do this research, like, you know, everybody gives me their bio, but like, if I don't dive in deeper, then I don't find out like all of those little interesting tidbits that, I think are worth sharing. Look, I'll jump ahead then. Like I'll say, like, I was really excited when I found out that you are a musician as well. And I went and I listened to some of the clips that you had on there. And you have like a bit of a, like a Lumineers or a Mumford and Son sound to you. Like, I think it's really cool. And um, people should go check out your Instagram at Lonesome Motel, which I think is really cool. Cool. Thank you. And I know you continue to submit your music to commercials and movies. Um, and it was in Hudson, I believe, as well, right? Yeah, I, I wrote some songs for for the feature film Hudson um, that we made. And, you know, with the help of other people, too, we kind of all there was like two or three musicians that helped me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just that simple sort of like acoustic songwriting. And I thought it would fit good with this kind of heartfelt movie. So I did about four or five tracks for the, uh, for the film, which worked out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I I enjoyed it. It was such a unique movie. It was very different. And um, I, I found it kind of funny that, or maybe not funny, but there was a lot of recurring characters and people. (laughs) Um, But I think that's, that's what's so nice about connection, right? Like we connect with certain people, we work with them in a certain way and we want to carry it into all of our projects, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. There's, um, I feel like we have this running joke, like in Hudson, we had, there's this ex-girlfriend, uh, Beth and everything we make happens to be like Beth and you just hear about her. You never see her, but it's always like, oh yeah, she said this and that. So like, it's kind of up to the audience to like picture this character and we just think it's funny. So we keep doing it. It's in Greg in LA. <laughs> We had it's you know that's the the first episode is like his wife leaves him and that's everybody just keeps talking about Beth the whole time, and I don't know it's just it kind of stuck and it's like a, a running joke for us but um maybe no, I picked we'll actually, up on it yeah there you go we should show her at some point I think <laughs> well I was gonna ask you in season three like is she yeah. gonna be I see we're jumping ahead but um so <laughs> Greg in L A has two full seasons on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And you now are creating season three. So my question is, will, will Beth make an appearance? Yeah, it's a good question. I think, I think she will. Um, I want her to anyway, this might be a surprise for Greg. (laughs) We haven't, we haven't totally talked about it. Attention, Gregory. I was, was, we're messing around with ideas right now and kind of in the writing stage of things. So um, for season three, yeah, it might be interesting to kind of raise the stakes and see this person that's always being talked about. Um, Especially when it's a breakup, it's like the cause of this whole, like, you know, series. So, um, yeah, I think I'll, I'll say maybe she might come well, back. <laughs> you know, the other side of that, like if I was to play devil's advocate, it's kind of interesting if she remains like a figment of our imagination, because 
you know, as he goes through all of these, you know, stages of breaking up, you know, the, the uh, depression of it and the anguish and the anger and the acceptance and, you know, all those stages, everybody else can relate to that. So Beth takes on the face of somebody you lost in the past, whether it's male or female. So in a way, the mystery is kind of cool too. Yeah. Yeah. It kind of makes it, um, everybody has their own like version of Beth in their head. So, mm -hmm. so that, there is something cool about that. Um, yeah, I think maybe, maybe we'll just show like a part of her, like a half of her face or something. Oh yeah. Like her walking away, <laughs> yeah. walking away. I can't say that and turn from the mic because no one <laughs> knows what I'm doing, but that would be funny. I, I thought it was just funny though. Like in Hudson, you had this character and she was Elizabeth Beth Elizabeth or something like that. And then yeah. you have it in the show. And then oh, just a funny little sidebar. Um, Greg and I had been corresponding in Instagram and he, Instagram has this new feature where you can sort of put a, a little quote of the day or a couple of words. It's got this little plus sign on there. And mm -hmm. he wrote that his middle name was Keith. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like a random thing right so random <laughs> so random so I wrote to him I answered I'm like my middle name's Elizabeth <laughs> <laughs> is it really yes is it, oh my god that's so funny maybe yeah. I'll maybe I'll be the voice of Beth for you <laughs> yeah that's perfect I think you got it you nailed it yeah, that's true. In the film. So Hudson, by the way, for people listening or watching, it's available on Amazon Prime and mm -hmm. uh, Apple TV and Tubi. It's free on Tubi. Um, and it's like a short, um, I guess, like dramedy feature. It's it's not like a long feature. It's like 75 minutes. So it's worth your time. Check it out. But anyway, <laughs> I just had to plug I, that. No, no. I, I, and we said that in the beginning. It's a, re <laughs> it's a cool movie. Like, I, sure. I think I loved... Um, there were like certain interactions that really stuck with me. Um, and, and forgive me, I forgot the name of the actor um, in Hudson. His, his Is it name David? Was... David Neil Levin? Yes, thank you. David mm -hmm. Neil Levin, who plays Hudson. Um, and he was in, at the um, doctor's office. And the doctor is Richard Mazur and it's his father. And mm -hmm. there was this little piece that never got played out, but I picked up on it the nurse had like a crush on Hudson. Was that intentional? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of this, like, I guess, um, little sideshow happening like throughout the scene and it, you get it like with a couple, um, a couple moments that you see it's Julia Tokars who plays that character. Um, and she just had, she, it was her idea to wear braces too. So she's kind of this geeky, like awkward, you know, girl that has the crush. I didn't even notice and, it. Yeah, there's like one point where she smiles and you see it. And I was like, that's genius. I can't believe you like put those on your teeth. Like, thank you for doing that. <laughs> but it just kind of made the character those little details. And mm -hmm. um, we thought it would be kind of nice, you know, for the end of the film to show a little bit of hope. Um, you know, he he reconnects with his dad somewhat. You know, maybe his, um, his character Hudson and the nurse will have something down the road. Nothing's really said, but I think that was kind of the... Um, the point of it just to give everybody like a little you know a little hope for the future there i, th I thought it was sweet because he had such an innocence about him and you could just tell like her her little infatuation with him too had an innocence i kind of liked it was like this whole other movie playing out in there i i actually really enjoyed that part it really resonated with me oh cool i love that yeah yeah i think um yeah, hopefully a lot can be said with those simple moments. You kind of you're kind of like, oh, are they gonna, you know, is this are they gonna hit it off? Or uh, but yeah, it's fun to it's fun to create those scenes. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um I have a question that would be probably on repeat for you or almost redundant if you interviewed a lot. Um, but since I'm your first podcast, um, <laughs> how did you start in film? Oh, well, um, I kind of have a, I feel like I have a similar story to a lot of filmmakers. Like I started, you know, young, I, I grabbed a camera that was sitting around as my dad's camera. I was probably like 12 or 13 and just started making, uh, making shorts, you know, dumb little like comedy, comedy skits and stuff like that. Um, and 
I think I don't know what drew me to that. I always loved watching movies. You know, I became obsessed with like watching Indiana Jones when I was younger, and I used to like dress like him like all the time. Um, you know, I would I would like role play, and then also just like at the dinner table, just like normal conversation, like still dressed up, <laughs> breaking so, like, the character. I just was like a method actor at a young age. <laughs> But no, I, I always loved um, characters and films. And I, I think when I started, it was, you know, doing these um, these little comedy things and grabbing whoever was around, uh, you know, my brothers or neighbors or friends. And uh, it just became a funny thing to make something, even if it wasn't great, and then gather everybody around and show them. And it was like, my family was kind of my first audience. And if they, when, you know, if they laughed at a joke, I was like, oh my God, this is a great feeling. So I think I just wanted to keep making stuff and and show it. Mm. Um, and they still laugh at stuff, which is which is awesome. They're the first people I send uh, like first cuts to like of commercials and films um, because they're kind of like my my like original fan club. But um, yeah, from there, I think I just I knew I wanted to do film school. I went to Binghamton University for uh, film. It's in upstate New York. I know where it and, is. My oh, husband cool. worked. Yeah, my husband worked up there. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm from Syracuse. So it's close by um, to that's like about an hour from Syracuse mm -hmm. and, you know, a small film program, really, really cool. A lot of theory and writing and um, not so much production, but just watching films and really trying to understand them. Um, so, you know, I think I did more, you know, more of like the filmmaking outside of that, just kind of teaching myself, grabbing the camera and doing it and learning editing and just writing scripts and getting better at that and um, just constantly doing it. And then after school, I um, fell into commercial filmmaking. So that was really like the first, uh, you know, job that I had was just like doing, doing these commercials. Um, and I think it was like the year after I graduated college, this is a long time ago, God, like 2008 seems like a long time ago now, <laughs> but it was like the summer after I graduated I did, uh, you remember those I Love New York campaigns? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so I did one of those and it was like a contest almost. And I just, I had no idea what I was doing. I just finished school. I saw something online. I was like, oh, I could do something about, you know, a character going upstate for one of these, you know, campaigns and I ended up winning. And they like flew me to New York and that kind of like, you know, pushed me a little bit into this uh, commercial world of telling stories in like 30 seconds or 60 seconds. So I kind of fell in love with that short story um, kind of method and just did, you know, for the next 10 years, just did commercials and worked on film. So that's, you know, that's the long version. <laughs> no, I love that. It's interesting because um, Greg in LA really feels that way because it's short form. Everything is like one or two minutes. So it's akin to a miniature story, like a commercial Um and it sounds like uh, that format really worked for you. And it was timely because all of the platforms and social media optimized for video and all in about the same time frame. So you were able to like run your season, each episode on TikTok reels and YouTube shorts. And it fit that genre. Like that was what everybody had now been groomed to watch but you, you had experience in it. So like your, each of your shorts are very, um, each of your episodes are very, they're like everything in that minute. Like you, you don't, you don't necessarily need more. And, um, so I, I love, I think that's brilliant. Um, and maybe also a little bit, um, coincidental, just like where we are now in using those types of social media platforms, but, um, I don't know hundred percent where I'm going with this question, but maybe season no, three, cool. are you, are you going to keep them that same size or are you looking to make your episodes longer? I I'd love to keep them this, this kind of the same, maybe, maybe slightly longer. We, we started them out, um, Greg in LA, you can follow it. Greg in LA series at Greg in LA series, by the way. Um, and we, we started out doing one minute, um, episodes and we thought that this would be you know and like you said coming from this commercial world it just made sense we're like we can you know we've done it me and greg have worked together like 10 years he's been in a ton of my commercials um and short films and the feature film so we kind of um i guess got better at like um 
you know, cramming all these moments and emotions into this short kind of like little piece. You have. And so we, <laughs> it's awesome. And I think, you know, we made, we, we kind of like made it one minute initially. And we're like, we're not going to go over one minute. And we were really like steadfast to that for some reason. I think it was just kind of to um, keep ourselves from making it too long. And then we kind of started to like write and develop characters and it became a minute and a half, two minutes. But I think around two is still like watchable. You don't want to like really, um, I don't think anyone's going to watch something longer than that, to be honest. <laughs> um, unless unless well, they're like really good and they're like totally invested. But I think with with the attention span and everything, it's it's tough. So I'd like to keep them short. Yeah, our attention span is, is really horrible these days. I always say my, <laughs> we've been reduced to the attention span of a gnat. But yeah. I... I think what's so magical about the show is you you get so much feeling and emotion and you capture the moment that he's in in a minute or two. Like I I I, I say don't change the formula yet. You know, you could always go longer later, but it seems to be working and you're getting like a viral following, right? Yeah, it, yeah, it's it's um it's kind of nuts. So it's up to like I think it's over thirty thousand um, followers now, and that just happens from a clip that kind of went viral. It was this influencer clip oh, that, yeah, that was you know, great. and it was just it's like my friend Lauren Reeves uh, played that, and you know she's not really an actor; she's a comedy writer, but I just think she's hilarious. And I was like, "Do you want to do this quick thing?" And she was like, "I love the show, so I'll do it." And you know, it's got like over three million views now. And I think that was sort of the start of gaining all these followers and that, you know, um, and we were like, you know, hopefully they're going to the page and watching these episodes and get getting to know the characters and everything. Um, so yeah, it's been pretty cool. I forgot what you just asked me. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're just, we're, we're, we're just, you know, shooting the shit as me. they say. It's okay. totally good. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, I'm always talking about connection because it's, it, for me, it's everything. Like I, I love to spend time with people and understand uh, who they really are. And the two of you, you and Greg, you've been working together for like a decade, you said. Um, the connection is really um, special. Like when I was talking with him, he was saying how even when you guys work, like you don't have everything written out like you you work off of each other so like he might start something in terms of like the direction that that scene is going and then you kind of finish it you like finish each other's sentences i i if yeah. i'm not mistaken that's so true yeah i think i think at this point we kind of have a shorthand um like I'll start to have an idea when we're filming something and he almost knows what i'm going to say he goes all right, all right i got it i got it <laughs> i think so that's really gotta, cool <laughs> We kind of know because I think he's seeing it. It's very cool. And I think it takes I think it takes that long to kind of develop that, just working with somebody that long. Um, and you know, he we're always kind of open to trying stuff. And that's that's what makes these episodes and the film and everything we've done kind of exciting is that we we do have a script and it's like it's there for structure when we show up. And um a lot of times we'll go through the lines and we're like, this seems a little contrived. Like let's, you know, let's make it more conversational and um, just try things out. So that's, that's what we've done every time. And sometimes it's like, we don't even use the script at all. We just completely go in a different direction because we find one joke is funny and we're like, let's go off that. So, um, I think the hardest part is honestly me just trying not to laugh because I just ruin every take, but <laughs> <laughs> every, these guys are so funny. Every, you know, this guy, Jacob uh, Jeffries that we cast, he just kills me. He's this musician in LA and you know, I asked him to be in this. He's like, I'm not really an actor. I'm like, yeah, but you're hilarious. And he, he, he turned out to be like this consistent character. And I just, I crack up at, at those guys together. It's, they're just so funny. So we I love, blast. I love that you're not traditional that way that you've chosen to use somebody who's a comedy writer, somebody who's a musician, um, to maybe go outside of the box of, you know, uh, how the scene's going to play out just using personalities and connection. And so the chemistry is all there. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I think it's, that's what it's based on. Sometimes I'll, I'll meet somebody and just be like, man, they just really, 
they just wholeheartedly make me laugh and they're just funny and genuine. So I, I, I keep them in mind to like throw into a scene. Um, because a lot of times, you know, actors are great and they're very trained. They work differently, but I, I like to have that sort of, um, I don't know that, that realness to it, that, um, actors can kind of overdo sometimes. Well, and I think we can all embrace uh, awkwardness, you know, like right. somebody who's just not perfect um, or is that polished actor. You you know, you can see that. Um, sure, there's lots of polished actors that have mastered, you know, being maybe a little awkward or I don't know. Right. Uh, we, I don't know what the term is I'm trying to to use. Like Maybe they, just like more themselves or more candid. You know? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people I think who can master that, but um, it's kind of nice when you get it organically through somebody who isn't typically on film, like the musician or yeah. the comedy writer. It's kind of nice. I know. I love that. It adds this nice element to it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so that was fun. one of my favorites, by the way, the, in, the influencer, the influencer. And, <laughs> and then also the um, the child startup. Um, oh, yes. The in the company and um, how she was also talking about influence, like, you know, Greg, yeah. you, you like you have no followers, you know, Instagram, Facebook, whatever it is. Just <laughs> it's so funny. Um, so I, that's I, another I, that's another character that I that's a, uh, a friend of mine. That's her daughter. Her name's Juana. And she is not an actor either. That's the first thing she's ever acted in. Oh, that's so, so funny. I, you know, I met her at like a, they were having a party and, you know, there were some kids around and hanging out. And she was just this precocious little kid that came up and started talking to me. And I'm like, you are hilarious. And I just thought, you know, maybe she could crush this part of, of playing this, this CEO. And she did it. She learned the lines and came in and absolutely just nailed it. And now she's like obsessed with acting. I'm like, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, mom and dad. Sorry. I know she was pre-med an hour ago, but not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so she loves it now. And she did such a good job. And, um, you know, that clip has done well, too. It's like a half a million views, I think. And she's just a funny character. So she's definitely going to come back. No, I love that. What about um, Winston, my other favorite character in there? How I was telling Greg, he's like the Yoda of dogs. Like I, I love all the, the he things is. that. Yeah, right. He's Yoda. Yeah, that's so true. Um, yeah, we that sort of just developed on its own. I don't think, um, you know, when we started the series, we didn't really have everything mapped out. Like this is who you're going to be, and your dog's going to talk to you. I think it just kind of happens. Yeah. organically and i think we were filming winston one day and i'm like he looks like he, he has such um great expressions he's just he looks like he's talking to you and listening mm -hmm. and i'm like man i'm just gonna give him subtitles and i think I, I i robbed that from something that i've seen but um it's just funny to think that he can give this 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 wisdom to greg and help him out you know when um and it's really almost in a way it's so fantastical that it's like maybe Greg is just coming up with this on his own too. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like this Kelvin and Hobbes thing where it's like, are the is the is the thing alive or is it a stuffed animal? <laughs> that that is a great analogy. I forgot about Kelvin and Hobbes. Uh, but I but I love the little signposts you put in. Like I was I was uh in my interview with Greg, I was talking about this. Um, and I don't know how it came together for you, but like when he's walking down the road with the dog and having this internal conversation, you know, back and forth, that's all in subtitles. And he's talking about, you know, uh, you have to like go back to understand how to go forward or something like that. I'm, I know I'm killing how you wrote it, but <laughs> no, it's, um, right. it's even the light at the crosswalk was, you know, you had the red for don't walk you know, and, and then mm -hmm. it was the walking sign and is looking backwards. And like, you have all of these little signposts. And again, I know I'm killing it because I, I, um, it's not fresh in my head, how you, how that came together, but did you that see was, that? Yeah. Yeah. I think that, you know, sometimes, um, I think that idea was, was planned ahead. I was like, you know, it's just the, it, the image of him in his robe, you know, standing at this busy intersection is just kind of funny to me. So, um, you know, Winston's dialogue always comes later. I don't know exactly what he's going to say um, because we're just kind of throwing in the subtitles, you know, as we edit the episode. But um, it did have this theme of like, um, 
you know, Beth's back there. You got to either move forward or like stay in a holding pattern. I think that's mm-hmm. what he says. Yeah. 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 So it's just kind of like waiting to cross the street. And I think we use that as this simple moment um, that can work well in that, in that short form moment. Cause you're like, what's he going to do? And it's this larger than life kind of feeling. And, and I love, um, I saw it in a reel, actually, I don't even know. Was there the, an episode where he, he got a new robe for Christmas from Winston? Yes. We got to bring that in. <laughs> it says so much. It's like part of his healing process. Like, so like yes. uh, in season three, are we going to see him starting to come out of his fog? And, and it's with things like that, like starting, like, you know how we have new year's resolutions and, and things like that. So he gets the robe. Like, is that him making the mental shift that I have to go on with my life now. Yeah. I think that sounds right. Um, <laughs> I'm writing think... your script with you right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, that's actually perfect. Um, he's really got to get out of this, you know, wallowing stage that he's in and this existential stage, even though it's funny and it makes for great conversation. I think that can still kind of come up. Um, I think he needs a bit of a goal and to, you know, move, move on and actually start doing something. And the new robe is maybe, you know, a good thing to to bring back for that. I think mm-hmm. we were going to, because the whole first two seasons, he's wearing his ex-girlfriend's, you know, robe. And it's just so, it's so funny because he can't let it go. And I think Greg just did that on his own. He was just wearing it one day. I think he might actually wear his girlfriend's or his fiance's <laughs> robe and, that's just something he does naturally. So I'm like, I got to just start rolling. Like, let's, we got to capture this character. <laughs> no, I think it's fabulous. I think it's fabulous. Yeah. Maybe he'll be on the road to like, <laughs> you know, his mental state and, you know, getting out there. Um, you can have him yeah. listening to podcasts to better himself. <laughs> I was actually thinking that was, that was some of, uh, that was included in an episode idea, actually. Um, just kind of like walking around and listening to this, this voice and this kind of like self-help thing. And I was going to have the, the character just start saying ridiculous things to him because there, <laughs> there is a surreal element to the show too, is a little bit of absurdity that comes out, which is I'm going nice. to volunteer to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You got it. <laughs> hey, I have the microphone. I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, it's perfect. <laughs> Oh, I just, I love it. I love everything you guys do. And I love the transformation he's going through. And, and I also, like I was saying to, to Greg, we're rooting for him, you know, like even like when he went out on that date, um, Mm -hmm. you know, trying like so hard and he's having a good time. And then all of a sudden she bumps into like an old boyfriend and the whole thing was just like dissolved because, it wasn't the same yeah. energy. She ob- obviously the, the uh, relationship she had with that other guy was like this deep, intense, beautiful, <laughs> magical thing. And what they were having was like walking around eating ice cream. It just like, wasn't, it was more like friends. And it was, it's like, we want yeah. Greg to have that. <laughs> it's so true. I know that was actually a real, that moment really happened to me. I was like, I got to put this into something. Uh, so it's just, it's such a funny moment. Cause, um, when no words are spoken, it's like so much is said with a long hug from somebody. It's like, what, what just happened there? <laughs> oh my God, that happened to you. It's like art yeah. from life or life almost from, verbatim that say? scene. Yeah. Happened to me when I lived in New York, I was walking around dating this girl and um, we were having that sort of day. Like we were, we had like ice cream or we walking around and she ran into somebody that she knew uh, on the street, I guess from her past, didn't introduce me at all. But they just locked eyes and they had this really long hug. And I just kind of stood there like my hands in my pockets. And it was just oh, so man. absurd. And then there was just this long gaze. And then they she kind of went back to walking with me, but she had this like warmth to her now. And I was like, so what just happened back there? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, but I mean, you don't, you don't forget stuff like that. So I think it's kind of cathartic to throw it into a show. <laughs> yeah. And then you made Greg live through it. So, and, <laughs> yeah. right. So you guys are so connected. Like, did you end up having like a, a longer conversation about that just because you guys were connected in such a strong way or Greg and of... I, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, just, are you, t- are you referring to just that scene or just, yeah, well, uh... you said it was kind of reenacting an experience you had. So, sure, sure. and you and Greg are so connected. I would think that that probably would have ended up being a longer oh. conver- conversation between the two of you. <laughs> 
Yeah. Or I'm making it up, I said. I think honestly, we, you know, when we get together and talk, we have such similar um lives with, you know, with siblings and parents and all these, you know, we just we look at the world in the same the same view. Um just the absurdity and the and the comedy and like and the sadness too. And so I think when we talk, just like an idea will just come out organically. We'll be like, oh my God, that's perfect. Like somebody, you know, that hasn't talked to their sibling in a long time. And it's like, that's going to be the moment and this awkwardness. So I think it comes from just us like using each other, using each other as like therapists <laughs> and we're like just getting stuff out. And then we're like, yeah, this will be a great episode idea. <laughs> and I think also your upbringing, you're both kind of Northeast and there's like- yes a certain vibe and mentality, you know, the East coast versus West coast. I'm assuming LA feels very different. Yeah, it does. Um, you know, a lot of people that live in LA, um, that I've met at least are kind of from all over. It's a very transient city. I've only met like a couple people that are like from here, um, from LA. So, but I, I agree. I think there's, there's a genuineness to East coast people and, you know, um, I can almost tell immediately when I meet somebody out here in LA, I'm like, you're from like New York or somewhere, <laughs> I don't know, New, like New England somewhere. <laughs> and uh, exactly. you, you can just tell there's like a warmth or there's something there. Oh, see, you're saying there's a warmth with me. No, I'm, yes. from, I'm from Connecticut, actually. Yeah, I knew it. Originally. <laughs> and I'm in DC, which is also very transient, like LA. So it's kind of a little out of body yeah. experience when I meet people here because they're from all over and they're usually here to work on the hill. Like you, you just feel like a different, it's a different vibe. Yeah. Right. That is, that is interesting. So where are you, where are you right now? I'm in DC. You're right. in DC? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But Excellent. from Connecticut. So, from Connecticut. um, and lived all over Connecticut. Um, and my son is in Boston. So actually I'm going there this weekend. Cool. I know, uh, Greg has his Boston roots too, where he went. Yeah, that's right. That's school. where he went to. Yeah, yeah went to acting yeah. school. That's awesome. So we have we all have these like six degrees of. I'm yeah. I'm starting to call it connection instead of separation because I feel like we're all connected in some way. Yeah, North, northeast mentality. We're all connected to what is it? Kevin Bacon as yes. every actor is connected to him. <laughs> six degree. They call it six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Yeah, that's a great game. <laughs> you know, I I don't know what my. Have you ever played it? Like, I, are you connected in some way? I don't even know. Yeah, I don't know if I was just trying to think if it's if it's um actors or if it's you like everyone in, like. I think is it's it everyone. Just, it's everyone. So everyone in the so. world is connected to Kevin Bacon. Yeah, by six degrees really in funny. some way. Like I think wow. I I think he lived or lives. Um, I want to say he lives in like New York. Um, yeah, I think he does. In that like, because I w one of the last places we lived was Northwest Connecticut, which is like Washington, Connecticut, which is really close to the border of New York. Mm -hmm. Um. And I feel like that's where maybe he lived for a period of time. I think I they're know. based over there. They have a camp that's like up in the Adirondacks and um, everybody's always like, oh, that's the Bacon Brothers camp. Cause he's got, he does music with his, with his brother mm -hmm. as well, Michael mm -hmm. Bacon. And, I forgot um, about that. Yeah. And so they're, yeah, they're. Uh, and maybe they played, cool. maybe they played near me. Maybe that's what's coming back. There's my six. Yeah, degree. that's what it is. Maybe it's like Everybody, 18. Maybe degrees. it's the Bacon Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 18 degrees. That's safe. That's a safe number. <laughs> safe. <laughs> oh man, that's great. That. So um we see season three coming out. Um yes. is which is so exciting. And and we'll share this podcast and the one with Greg and and try and get some more hype for you. Um, are there any dreams? Yeah. Are there any dream projects or anything you want to share that I have not asked you? Um, we have a lot of scripts that are in the works right now. I'm working on like two or three feature scripts. You know, they're, they're coming along slowly and um, it's mostly uh, just trying to get funding and figure out logistics and stuff. But I think the ideas are there. And of course, Greg is going to be in like all of them. He looked at me one day and he's like, dude, at some point you're like, like your agent's going to be like, you got to cast somebody else. Like I can't be in every single thing you do. That's so <laughs> like, funny. I don't care. Why not? It's like Scorsese and Leo, man. You know, just. Uh... <laughs> That's true. That's true. You'll be the, you have... the next generation of that. 
yeah, you have that that partnership. You're like, why ruin it? I don't know. You know, why rock the boat? You know, you talk about funding. I'm going to go back in time for a second. So my show has um, gone through several iterations. So season one was um, conversations about company culture from the C-suite. But mm-hmm. the show started right as the pandemic started in like April, 2020. So immediately my conversation shifted to um, working from home and what company culture looked like basically from our kitchens. Yeah. And um, as the show graduated, I started talking about um, creators and the gig economy that emerged from the great resignation. Now I know this is boring the crap out of you, but I just (laughs) want to take you. So season three because I'm always in a learning mode. Um, I noticed a lot of creators were getting into uh, blockchain and NFTs. Now, I know you have no clue where this is going, but it is going somewhere. <laughs> Season four, I talked to NFT artists and collectors and people in that business. And this is where I'm landing on this conversation with you because I interviewed a guy that Um, created an NFT for his movie. And what it did is it allowed people to buy, to buy into the project. And so because an NFT lives on a blockchain, it's, um, it's a contract, if you will, that NFT is a contract between those two people. And um, if you buy that NFT, you have a certain measure of ownership. So instead of bringing in all of these investors that maybe have a large percentage of your project, you could create an NFT where people can buy in. And so you have a lot of small investors that have the heart behind the projects you're doing, um, especially for, you know, smaller scale, like people like, you know, more starting out in the industry, but people feel like they have a piece of it. Um, I love that idea. Yeah. I don't know if that idea resonates with you. I can send you a link to um, the episode where we talk a little more deeply about it and you can look at the model that he created, but um, it was for an epic movie that, and he's working with directors that were worked with like Steven Spielberg and stuff like that. Like, I mean, it's legit. Um, It's not just like a made up idea, but um, yeah. So I do think that's, there's something very cool about that because it goes back to like, Kind of putting it in the hands of the people and it's crowdsourcing and you don't really need these gatekeepers or agents or studios you can kind of do it with people that just have the money and believe in you and want to invest i think that's that's a cool idea yeah and i think you can build in um like bonus experiences in it you know that's one of the things about nfts is that it can unlock experiences so it might be an opportunity for them to unlock like coming to the premiere or being mm-hmm. an extra on a certain day in a certain place. They have to get themselves there if they want to be part sure. of it, but maybe you need like a park full of people sitting there. And so it's an opportunity for these people who invested to be a part of the finished product. Um, yeah. It's just and an there's example. Like, and there's, you know, producer credits. A lot of people want to be involved in a film. They don't know how to be, but they, you know, I've run into people that just have the money. They're like, I want to do this. I want to invest and be like an executive producer on something. And it's, that's cool too. It's like, Hey, if you want that title, you know, the biggest issue is really getting the funding. So. Right. And, and that's how you get it. Yeah. What two other little components to it that I think are really interesting is blockchains evolving. And a lot of people are afraid to learn about it or be a part of it because it's tied to the conversation around cryptocurrency. And a lot of people just aren't comfortable um, converting their money to that or dealing with that. But I think a lot of the um, uh, exchanges now are working with what's called fiat, which is regular dollars. And um, so there's the opportunity to um, still have that relationship with people on the blockchain Mm -hmm. through an NFT with regular dollars and not make it something fearful, if you will. That's cool. Yeah, I totally understand that because I'm a little bit... um... Yeah, I'm not up with all that. I think Greg's Greg is more so. This sounds like something he would be like researching, getting into. He invests more than I do. But um I'd love to embrace it and get in, you know, find out more about it for sure. 
Well, um, maybe maybe I'll reach out to Greg and we can have a, a, yeah. a bigger conversation <laughs> about that. Um, Absolutely. Maybe on another interview or something, but um, yeah. I'll send you the link anyway. I think the concept, if you listen to it conceptually, um, more than the details of like, how do I make it happen? Just to understand mm. if it fits uh, a future project for you or it's an option. I mean, yeah, I'd even love if to you check never use out. it. I'll yeah. send that to you. I'll send that to you. Um, Absolutely. So everybody, this was awesome. We have Sean Cunningham <laughs> from Greg in LA. And this is really great. Yeah, this is so fun. I, I enjoyed talking with you. It's great. Same here. Same here. Yeah. So thank you for coming on. I will um, let everybody um, know about everything. We'll put all that in the show notes about your projects so that they cool. could find you like Lonesome Motel on Instagram and, <laughs> and Greg in LA on YouTube. It'll all be there. And um, yeah, I look Excellent. forward to uh, watching the show evolve. Thank you yeah, for what you're doing. You. Awesome. Holly, thank you so much again. Thanks. That's a yeah. wrap. All right. We did it. <laughs> We did it. Do you have more of this? Share your thoughts and ideas on coffee culture. You could put them in the reviews on Apple Podcasts or DM me on Instagram. And if you'd like to support an indie podcaster, there is a link in the show notes for buying me a coffee. Please subscribe and share a cup of coffee culture with your friends. This season is produced by Pale Blue Studios.